Hello and welcome to my YouTube guide on how to get low cost second hand hard drives from obsolete skyboxes for very little money. Now the example I'll be showing you today is a box I picked up from my local car boot sale today for just £2 and my objective was to dismantle it to get the hard disk drive out because if you do any kind of video recording in HD formatting, you'll find out very quickly that you use up a lot of storage space. Now, my computer back here uses a 500 gigabyte solid state, but I will burn through that very quickly if I'm not careful. So I have to have exterior drives I can dump all my data on and, you know, can't, can't sit in shot there, but I do have a standard external drive. But obviously, they're about they start at about £35 for a terabyte size drive. So, a source of cheap drives you can go and get your hands on will keep your project costs down but still be very useful. So, let's get started. Right, the tools you'll need to take apart a skybox really aren't much. Uh, this is a PH1 flat headed screwdriver and a pair of pliers and that's to straighten out the metal bits that the case and clamps are all held together with. That's really it and also where I although I'm not wearing gloves I'd recommend you wear gloves because the sharp edges inside the case can hurt you. Right so the donor sky box that I have acquired from my local car boot sale for two pounds is one of the more recent models and the reason I know it's more recent is very easy. If you lift it up and lock on the front, it says 3D Anytime. That lets me know that this is a more recent model. And even even if I, if I wanted to plug this in and see if it was any good, I'd even have the old card. Why do yeah, yeah, why do all Sky cards have look like burnt out chips in them? Is this a design flaw? I know these are things are made by Amstrad, but come on. Anyway, so. Now we're going to begin on opening it up and see if we can get the hard drive out and show you what it looks like. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove these two screws off the back. And then take this, yeah, take these two screws out. Yep. And then when you flip to the underside, we're going to remove this screw here this screw here you'll need a PH1 screwdriver and you'll need to disconnect this tab once you've done that you'll need to there's two oh, that's not very good here you need to lift up these two tabs here you can actually break them off it doesn't matter too much and slide the case off. Can't do it with one hand, so bear with me. Right, these have just been pulled out. Now, when you get these, just uh, these just literally pull out to the back once you've unscrewed them. So that's how you get those out. Then you need to get these off, and you just push them out, rip them down. Doesn't matter if you break them; you're not going to put this thing to back together. Yeah, there's a screw. There is a screw on the the card slot bit, which I forgot to remove. But never mind. Now we have the unit without any guts involved. So now we're going to get to the pretty tedious bit, and that is removing these. Now on the unit, you'll have a whole load of these metal clasps, which are twisted into place at the factory to hold down this metal plate. Best thing you can do if you can just get a pair of pliers and straighten them out. There's about there's only four on this one actually, so I will straighten them all out when I get back to you. Right, next we have here the insides of the sky box. I'm gonna guess that is a motherboard, that's your input board, that's his card reader, if you want to yell at me the compacts, whatever. They've actually bothered to put a fan in this thing nowadays, which is good. But that's what we're after, the hard disk drive. So I'm gonna remove this and then get to it. Now bear with me. 
Actually on the motherboard you'll notice that these cables are held together in place with cable tidies. Recommend you get a pair of snips or a pair of scissors just to I'll show you on this one. And you get it underneath and get them loose. Do all three. Now you're gonna pull out connection cables and pull out the SATA lead, which is handy. Actually it clips at the top, so just push that out, it's at an angle. Okay, so get them out of the way because you actually want those. So you want those so you can connect them to your PC if you don't use a dock. Remove that screw. Hold on. If anyone's remotely interested, this is the CPU that powers the board. Now, to lift this board off, you have to lift this off, so it's held in place with here. This is not going to be dignified, so you have to do it with two hands. On the front, on the where the main control board is kept, uh, zoom in there, you need to straighten out these little metal tab switches. There's one, two, three, four of them that I can see so I can actually pull this off. Okay, now you need, once you've taken that off by hand, and bear in mind you have to press those two back as well, you have to undo these two screws because that's part of the hard drive cable, uh, caddy, sorry, hard drive caddy that holds the thing in place. Now on this, the inside bit, you have to undo that screw and straighten out all these metal clasps, you can see them here, so you can actually lift the cradle out. Right, and then once you've got that, you need to take out these two screws. This is part of the plate that holds it down. I sh should have filmed it coming out of the cradle, but there was no need. It just lifts out if you go them straight. And after all that, we have managed to pull out of this £2 find at a car boot sale a Seagate 500 gigabyte hard drive. Let me just switch the camera around so you can read that. Yep. 500 gigabytes, it's not the most impressive hard drive, but for £2, what do you expect? And this will work when you connect it to your PC because it's just a hard drive when all said and done. So, yeah. Now, obviously, at the end, don't forget you've got all these bits. You can use that fan for a casing if you want, but it's not much worth using. And don't forget to throw all your bits in the recycling on all your bin because, you, yeah. So, that is my guide on how to get a cheap hard drive. If you can find these things for a couple of quid. Okay, so we're now um, we've now connected our hard drive, our two pound hard drive, to a universal docking station, and we have it got uh, mind the mess. We have actually got it connected to my computer. This is I don't have screen capture software, so you have to bear with me on this. So we're gonna open your files. I generally don't know what it's in. Oh, we got tons of data. Um, there's nothing on here. Well, actually there is. It's just my computer can't read it. But, yeah. I think there is software you can use to get files off, but, you know. The DRM data. Whatever. But there you go. On the, on the computer screen. That's the local drive. That's my SSD. But that is a... The hard drive is recognized by Windows. And now we're going to format it because it's no good. Of course, yes. Ah. Yes, I do. Right. So there you go. We, we're now formatting this drive so I can use it for data storage. And there you go. It does work. That's my little two-pound hard drive. Yes, I've got that antique in the corner. It reads that's because my the drive inside my Dell is broken. Mm -hmm. So that was my guide on how to take apart a skybox so you can utilize the hard disk drive for a cheap means of storage if you are 
if you need storage on a budget. I mean, I paid two pound for that skybox, and it was was well, not even ten minutes work to take it apart and get the hard disk drive out. I've shown you on my computer. It does work. You know, it's been formatted right now, and yeah, there you go. So, hope this guide's a help for you helpful for anybody on the internet who needs a cheap form of data storage on the internet and if they're like me they tend to have a little bit of a bug uh, try to save the pennies when they can they're a good source of cheap hard drives and they work on any pc so thanks for watching